Well, I, I just wanted to be clear, as, I, as I'm trying to be again today, that the President is committed to implementing a policy that will ensure that women across the country, no matter where they work, will have access to the same health care coverage and the same preventive care services, including contraception. It is also true, and has been true since the uh, day that this was announced, that we intend as an administration, as Secretary Sebelius said, to uh, work with religious groups that have concerns about this uh, to see if there's a way to implement that policy uh, that um, eases some of those concerns. And that's and, and, and both are true, but I, I wanted to be clear yesterday and I want to be clear today that the commitment to ensuring that women have access to this important uh, to these important health care services uh, remains very strong. So it's not a compromise because you won't walk back from access without a copay. Correct. There's also a difficulty within the Pentagon on this, the Army's chief of chaplains suggesting priests not read a letter from an archbishop he felt might uh, lead to disobedience, frankly. Well, my, my understanding, I'll refer you for specifics to the Pentagon, obviously, but my understanding is chaplains were absolutely free to express their opinions about this and did. Uh, but he didn't want to read a sentence of the letter from the Archbishop. I would refer you to the Defense Department, but I, I would certainly hope that in reporting on this, you noted that chaplains were absolutely free to express, as they should be, their opinion on, on this matter. Uh, Nora, I think Karen. Um, can you confirm that the President's former Chief of Staff, Bill Bailey, along with the Vice President, um, encouraged the President not to make this decision, but the President then sided with some of his female advisors, including the HHS Secretary? Uh, I'm not going to get into internal deliberations and who is on which side of uh, discussions and debates internally. Uh, I will say that, broadly speaking, the reports that lined certain people up in some ways on this issue were inaccurate, uh, both uh, broadly and uh, specifically in terms of some of the individuals, but I'm not going to engage in a guessing game about who thought uh, which way on which issue. And then on, on Iran, um, Iran's ambassador to Moscow said today that Iran is capable of carrying out military strikes on U.S. interests all around the world if Iran is uh, attacked. Is that a concern? Well, I'm not going to engage in a back and forth with this particular official, but rest assured, uh, we're extremely confident in our military's uh, ability to do uh, their job and um, also rest assured that force protection for those Americans deployed overseas uh, is our top priority. And then, um, just on Syria, if I could, um, I know you've, you've addressed this before, but I want to ask you again. Senator McCain and others are talking about whether we should uh, arm the opposition <coughs> in Syria. Has that been completely ruled out? We are pursuing a political path uh, in an attempt to resolve uh, with our international partners um, the situation in Syria, or rather to, to help the process move towards a peaceful political transition, democratic transition in Syria, working with friends of Syria uh, all around the globe. Uh, we believe that um, political solution is uh, the right way to go. Now, we never rule anything out in a situation like this, but we are pursuing a path that includes isolating and pressuring the Assad regime so that it stops its heinous uh, slaughtering of its own people uh, and that, uh, you know, in the coming days we will continue our very active discussions with uh, friends and allies who uh, support the Syrian people along with the opposition Syrian National Council to crystallize the international community's next steps uh, in that effort to halt the slaughter of the Syrian people and to pursue that transition to democracy. And how would humanitarian assistance be delivered? How much are we talking about? Has there been a dollar figure put on it? No, I, I, I appreciate the question, and I know that I raised this yesterday. We are, of course, uh, looking at humanitarian, humanitarian assistance to the Syrian people, and we have for some time. We're consulting with our international partners, uh, and we anticipate this being um, one of the focuses uh, focuses of the discussions that we'll have with uh, friends of Syria in, you know, in, an, in a friends of Syria meeting um, that may be held in the near future. Uh, because there is near universal concern about 
uh, the plight of the Syrian people as they are subjected to this brutal assault by the Assad regime. But I don't have specifics about content or delivery. I mean, these are, these are just discussions that we anticipate having with our international partners. Kristen. In the past, the administration has put forth names of officials who supported your policy decisions, for example, um, during the American Jobs Act, and the President first pulled that out. Um, we heard from a number of mayors. Why not release names of religious leaders who support uh, the HHS decision? Well, I, I'm not sure I, you know, I, I'm, anybody who uh, supports the decision to, and the general um, uh, approach to providing important health care services to women across the country um, is, is certainly welcome to, to express that opinion. This is not, again, this is, I think that we're engaged in a process that is seeks to find a balance between uh, a policy that ensures that women get access to these important services uh, and and that uh, no matter where they work and 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 also uh, deals with the understandable concerns of some uh, religious groups uh, and we're in the process of doing that your argument to be able to put forward a, a list of I, religious leaders? We're not trying to win an argument here. We're trying to implement a policy that will affect millions of women, well, all women, and uh, in this country, and, and also to, to do so in a way that's sensitive to uh, people's religious beliefs. Uh, and that reflects the approach the President takes, and it reflects the approach that Secretary Sebelius has taken. And on the payroll tax cut uh, discussions that are going on right now, there have been some rumblings that they might be considering a short-term deal again. Mm -hmm. Is this something that the president uh, would sign off on? Would he support this, or would he only accept a, a year-long extension? It is, uh, like I said, inconceivable that the same folks in Congress who almost prevented the payroll tax cut uh, from being, being extended for two months would, would want to go through that again. So we believe that there is consensus on Capitol Hill among Democrats and Republicans that we need to do this and we need to do it for the full calendar year. I mean, we just you know, need only point to the recent uh, economic growth and unemployment figures to, to, to note that the economy, while growing and creating jobs, needs this action to be taken to continue along uh, the road to recovery. Uh, I, I, I just can't imagine that folks in Congress are going to want to explain to their constituents that they blocked the extension of this tax cut, ensuring that taxes were raised on most of their constituents uh, because they couldn't sort out some easily resolvable issues with the Congress. We think that this can be done. We absolutely think it should be done for the remainder of the calendar year. And just one more on Syria. You've said in the past that, that you do think uh, Assad's fall is imminent. Given the fact that there's <coughs> increased violence over the weekend, last night, do you still see the situation in that light? There's no question that President Assad has uh, lost control over parts of his country. There's no question that he certainly lost the support of his people long ago, thanks to his brutality and his refusal to uh, participate in um, the kinds of uh, reforms that would have led to a democratic transition in Syria. Uh, there's no question that because of the efforts of the international community to put the squeeze on the regime financially, that his assets and his capacities are dwindling. Uh, and there's no question that those uh, around him, among uh, uh, within the military and governmental leadership are uh, beginning to doubt the wisdom of sticking by him. So yes, we believe that his days are numbered, and that's why we find it um, disappointing, to say the least, that uh, votes were taken in the United Nations Security Council to block that important resolution. Uh, it is simply uh, a mistake to side with a regime that is uh, going to go down in history uh, as a brutal repressor of its own people. 
it is a mistake to side with a regime whose days are numbered. Um, to isolate yourself uh, from the Syrian people, uh, that's the wrong action to take. The right place to be is with and in support of the Syrian people who are insisting on a peaceful transition to democracy. Uh, Karen and Jake. Thanks. Jim. And then I'll move back. I know it's been. Uh... Go ahead. You talked about the administration's commitment to reaching out to religious groups and getting their views. Is the president himself going to be involved in that process? Has he done any kind of outreach on that yet? Well, I think there's been some reporting about some of the uh, conversations the president has, but has had. But I don't. I don't have any scheduling uh, or any calls or meetings to announce from here that he may have in the future. Could we want to be personally involved? Well, in I think the president is very uh, aware of and engaged in this uh, issue, but I don't have any, again, meetings to uh, preview for you or conversations to uh, announce for you. And when you're emphasizing the effort to find a balance, isn't that the same thing as finding a compromise? and? What is the time frame? I just want to be clear. The language that is used to describe it is, is up to you guys. Um, what I am only trying to be clear about is that the commitment to make sure that all American women, no matter where they work, have access to uh, the same health care coverage and the same preventive care services, including contraception, is absolutely firm. That's the President's commitment. That is explicit in the policy proposal. The discussion and it's an important one, but the discussion is what, how, how can we, uh, in implementing this policy, uh, try to allay some of the concerns that have been expressed. And the President's very sensitive to that, uh, as is Secretary Sebelius and others. Um, but that's the issue. So I've described that as you will, but there is no change in the commitment to ensuring that women have access to these important services. And can that goal be achieved with some exceptions? And if you're looking at finding a balance, what is the time frame on Well, that? let's be clear that there is an exemption. There are exemptions within the rule as it exists, uh, including churches and houses of worship. Okay, further exceptions? Well, I, I, I don't want to negotiate or speculate about what discussions may be had and what, what policy proposals may be contained within them. What I will say is that the uh, President is committed to ensuring that women have access to these services uh, no matter where they work and that, they, um, that, that all women are treated equally in regard to this in terms of uh, no co-pays and no, uh, you know, no cost for these services provided. And what is the time frame on that discussion about finding a balance? Do you think that well, I was asked that earlier. I don't, I don't have a, a time frame to provide to you. Within the announcement that Secretary Sebelius made, uh, she described it as a, uh, a transition period of a year. Uh, so I would say some amount of time between one day and a year uh, is when this will uh, evolve. Okay, and then Jack. Uh, President Obama is going to be introducing his outline for a budget. Um, Fed Chair Bernanke has said the lack of a, a, a budget having been passed by the Senate has had an adverse effect on growth because it's created uncertainty. Um, Harry Reid has said that he doesn't think there's a need to introduce a budget this year. Uh, who, do you, who does the President think is right, Harry Reid or Ben Bernanke? Well, I, I think the President as you noted, will be presenting his budget. Uh, that budget, it's important to uh, remember, and you all covered it, uh, has spending caps set based on the Budget Control Act that was signed into law by this president last August. Uh, that spending, those, those spending, that spending, those spending levels uh, represent significant cuts uh, agreed to by Democrats and Republicans and by this president. Uh, and uh, his budget will reflect uh, the need for that, uh, will reflect those cuts, but also reflect the priorities that he thinks are very important. And I think priorities that, uh, to wrap in part of your question here, that Senator Reid believes are important as well, as, as do many members of the Senate and the House. So therefore, the Senate should pass a budget as well. I, I, I don't have a, I, well, I, I don't have an opinion to express on uh, how the Senate does its business with regards to this issue.